Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be number 5, I believe, of the Pokemon Grand Prix Elite 4. And uh, I have to get this out quickly. Uh, this is going to be a post -com. I think I live on this, but it was a very long match. And uh, it was just going to take a lot of time to edit and work with. So I'm just going to react to this match. But uh, I'm going to set the scene a little bit. So my match was one of the first ones to be played. Uh, the very first match was Earth Gone in the Week. It was Frosted. Uh, who took an early loss, a pretty strong loss. Uh, so from there, uh, we, we were already starting 0-1, and, and I had to go, go in and play this one against Austin. And I'm going to get right into this one, and then I'm uh, going to talk about the rest of the week after that. Because um, what's going to happen here is really going to set the stage for a lot of what's going to happen, obviously. Uh, being the second uh, match in the week, but uh, I do lead off with my Infernape. It is kind of just a safety blanket lead, a catch-all lead. And he leads off with uh, the Nudo King. Now, uh, two things that I've really kind of noticed about my team in general is that uh, I don't have a ton of special bulk and I'm kind of mildly ground weak. So any mon that can pretty safely kind of spam Earth Power really does a whole heck of a lot to my team. And I don't quite remember what I brought this muck for, but it, uh, I think this muck was kind of the most expendable member uh, of my team or one of them. So I felt free to kind of uh go into this get the get the berry up and maybe take another hit but at the very least just sack this to get a better matchup because um i don't really have a whole heck of a lot that's gonna be able to just kind of 1v1 this thing so from here this thing goes down and it's gonna allow me to bring back in the the Infernape, and now he knows that I'm faster. He knows that I can get some reasonably sized hits off. And I was gonna actually sack this off because I don't think Flare Blitz just straight up KOs. But what I could do is um, kind of play around this Nidor King a little bit. So I do end up just going for the Fire Blast. And I think the Fire Blast uh, did have a chance maybe to KO, but um, more likely than not, this was gonna be a sack. And then he goes for the Ditto play and he gets um, a Scarf U turn off. It's gonna be totally fine. I think he knows. Um, I did kind of build my Infernape so that it couldn't really beat itself. So um, I was always going to kind of win that one v one there. But I felt like that was going to be an interesting opportunity for me to flame charge here as he goes into the Volcanian. And again, the Volcanian is another Pokemon where uh, I don't really have mods that can Oko this in this matchup here. And I kind of just have to give up my Infernape in order to get some damage onto this thing. So Thunder Punch is going to be able to bring it down to fifty percent. Uh, I believe it's um. Uh, Expert Belt, Iron Fist, Th Thunder Punch. But uh, I did have an interesting set. I, th I think I revealed all my moves fl between Flame Charge, um, Flame Charge, Fire Blast, Thunder Punch, and uh, and U Turn. But now I'm going to be able to just take this thing out and get my Flame Orb going. So I'm feeling okay in this moment. Uh, as he's able to go into Agron. Now, this is going to be super interesting. So, I did my kind of standard Jolteon Flame Orb set where um, you, you, you kind of have to fine tune it to uh, get to 159 HP because 159 HP is the sweet spot where any more HP than that and you would and you would lose 10 points of HP each turn to the burn. But at 159, it rounds down to 9 HP. So, that's the most uh, HP you can have on a Flame Orb set and still uh, only take 9 HP each turn from, from Flame Orb. And that allows me to just put the to the, to put the rest in a physical defense, which actually allowed me to take an Agron Earthquake. It was uh, completely accidental. It, it honestly didn't even matter a whole heck of a lot in this matchup. But uh, the fact that I was able to do that and leave this uh, Agron out here allowed me to bring in my Necrozma. And my Necrozma is a super, is a pretty aggressive set of Necrozma. And here I'm feeling really, really good about what this is going to allow me to do in the larger scheme of this match. So I specifically, I think, went for the sub on this turn in case he wanted to kind of pull anything. But him going into the Aggron was super interesting to me. But uh, I did try to pull off, pull off a substitute because if the Ditto came in later, then the Ditto would not be able to uh, copy me if I'm behind a sub. I believe that's how it works. But uh, he does copy me before I get the sub up, which super duper sucks, and it's gonna allow him to get some Photon Geysers off, but again, I built this set to not be able to beat itself, uh, so that's gonna allow me to calm mind up, and this Ditto is gonna be stuck in this Scarf Photon Geyser, and I know he's only gonna have five, five Photon Geysers, and he's Scarf, most likely, but just, be, just by the way that he's been playing this Ditto so far, and, uh, the Infernape kind of, the Infernape interaction kind of, sort of, uh, confirmed it er earlier on, but, uh, again, 
the interesting thing here is that a uh, photon geyser on its own to to itself like a like a neutral photon geyser to itself uh is doing around i think i want to say 15 ish percent so two photon geysers always breaks up but if i uh, get ahead of him in terms of calm mines then that then those photon geysers start doing less and less where it's going to take three photon geysers from him just to break my my sub and um and and like I said, I did have this scarf ditto uh, interaction in mind when I built this set because um, because I I'd be able to set up on on his scarf ditto and his scarf ditto would, wouldn't be able to do a whole lot to, into me in return. And then I sub up as he goes into the aggron, which I thought was super interesting because for me this was super free setup for me. And given the way that this match is gone, I felt like I had to take whatever set opportunity to set up I could. But, um, I guess I was afraid, I, I don't know why I wouldn't have calm minded here, I guess I was too afraid of him, I don't know, I don't know. But, regardless, this is gonna leave me reasonably healthy, and, uh, I have a decent amount of boosts up here, and now I have to take on this type of Bulu, and I think uh, the better play would have been just to try to attack into this thing, but, uh, I wanted to kind of gauge what type of Bulu this was, I had no idea what kind of, uh, uh interactions I'd be looking at here. So, he goes for the Horn Leech, and uh, I want to say that I try to go for a Calm Mind here. No, I just go for the attack, and uh, this Bulu is bulky enough where it's going to be able to take it reasonably well. I mean, better than it should at like plus two, I believe I'm at so right now. And uh, it's a rough spot for me to be in because I really need this Necrozma to be healthier because uh, this Necrozma can, can genuinely just win. I mean, it, it would absolutely beat the Ditto. If I'm healthy enough, I have to be above around like 20-ish percent to, for me to beat the Ditto. Um, uh, I can take on the Halucha because regardless of of um, Grassy Seed, this Necrozma is super duper defensive and can take hits from pretty much that thing for days. With enough Calm Minds up, I can take on the Nido King. Uh, so this thing can win the match, but I need to leave this interaction healthy enough. And at this point, I think what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to, there's a crit, but I'm just trying to um, outlast the grassy terrain so that I can kind of try my best to to end this interaction with more health than I left. Well, I, I really can't end it with more health than I entered it, but in a good enough position where I can uh, kind of take on the rest of his team, but I honestly don't even know how uh, to maneuver this that well. Unless uh, he makes a super bold play. But regardless, I'm out here. I'm trying to do uh, Necrozma things. I know I'm getting a lot of health back between Leftovers and Grassy Terrain. But I think at this point, uh, I have to attack. No, I just go for the Moonlight. Okay. So I am going to leave this healthy enough. But he's getting more and more health back. And I need to be concerned about me being able to Oko him because I know that at plus two, it's apparently a roll. So if I get up to uh, plus three, then I would ensure it. I might have calm it up. I wasn't even really paying attention, but then he reveals bulk up and I'm getting super duper scared because now bulk up, I think uh, should counteract the uh, drop, the uh, quote unquote loss that he would get from losing the grassy terrain. But uh, now I have to figure out if Horn Leech, or or even if he has Wood Hammer, if that's going to do enough to me where uh, I'm going to kind of end up losing this interaction. So here I start to kind of panic, and I know that I have to have to go for a strong Photon Geyser, but he decides to switch out in this, in this moment, and uh, I think he knew that at plus three I would Oko based on the prior plus two damage, but uh, this really confused me because he could have left this interaction with my Necrozma really, really low. I... Uh, I kind of feel like that was a little bit of a misplay, but I'm not too too sure what was going on in his head in the moment, but um, this, he's going to bring out the Ditto, and this Ditto, again, is going to be pretty darn free set of fodder, and not only free set of fodder, but free sub fodder, so I'm going to end, I'm probably going to end this interaction behind a sub, which is going to be even bigger for me, um, but uh, at this point, oh no, I, uh, another thing to note is that at this point, he could absolutely be playing for me to run out of Photon Geysers because they only have 8 Photon Geysers and it's my only offensive move. Uh, again, I built a Necrozma that could, that could beat itself. Uh, I, I almost packed Earth Power on this, um, or maybe Heat Wave, I, I'm not too sure here. Uh, I almost packed a different coverage move on this Necrozma, but if I did that, then uh, if I gave his Necrozma enough boost, then he could just Oko me in return. So, 
uh, I opted for this kind of more uh, setup set and ultimately this is kind of just what I have to work with. But again, I'm still doing my absolute best to set up on this Necroz, end up buying a sub, end up reasonably healthy, and uh, I, have, I think I have the tools to do it right now. I know what I have to do because again, this Necrozma can beat his team. I just need to for I just need to put it in a position to beat his team. And uh, honestly, I kind of have to play this way because uh, whatever comes out later can potentially just kind of lose to this uh, to his Needle King in the back. On honestly, so. Here, I wish I would have attacked, but again, I am trying to preserve Photon Geyser, so I can't really fault myself too, too much for that, but uh, he finds an opportunity to hard switch in his Bulu, but because I'm behind a sub, it's going to leave me healthy enough where I'm going to be able to Oko this Bulu, regardless of, of what it goes for, and I'm going to be healthy enough where I'm going to try to take on the rest of his team, so... Uh, I'm more than healthy enough to take on the Needle King. I'm more than healthy enough to take on the... Oh, and actually, this is going to accelerate my, my healing every turn. So I'm going to be able to take on the Needle King, his Ditto. And the only question mark here is if his um, Halucha has any crazy tech up its sleeve that it can just destroy me with. But from every count that I can run, it looks like um, even, acrobatic, even boosted acrobatics uh, without any type of Swords Dance or anything like that should only be doing around like 30 to 40 ish percent at its max and uh there you just see it doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot and i'm gonna be able to take this thing out and end up at more or less the same amount of health just through um this double healing between turns so now i'm in a position where i can win this matchup as uh however i do i would ideally like to do it with necrozma because well actually i kind of have to do it with necrozma because uh, I'm going to be able to hit this thing, and, and he was telling me that he was counting my Photon Geysers and, tr and trying to make me run out of Photon Geysers. But the thing is, right, that uh, I have to kind of win here because if, if uh, my Necrozma goes down to his Necrozma, then at like plus five, I think we're at, I, I, if I leave him at plus five, then... Uh, he can beat my team with a scarfed uh, Necrozma of his own just attacking into me. So I have to be wary of winning with Necrozma right now. And I have to not run out of Photon Geysers. So now I'm kind of judging based on this damage what I can try to do here. And with the recovery, it's going to make it really, really tough. So what I decide to do here is... Um, I think this is going to also be the last turn of Grassy Terrain, which really kind of, yeah, made my decision for me. So what I can do here is go for Calm Mind and ensure that roll because um, I didn't mind if this Necrozma goes down. What I did mind was uh, running out of Photon Geysers and having to uh, struggle. I mean, honestly, if I did run out of Photon Geysers, I, I would have been perfectly prepared to timer stall the heck out of uh, out of Austin, but thankfully it didn't come to that. I, th I think we would have had like 30 minutes left to the timer stall or something like that, 20 to 30 or so. And uh, thankfully, because of that calm mind, it's gonna it's gonna ensure this roll. If this was ever a roll, this is going to just absolutely ensure the roll. Let me take out this Necrozma, and it's gonna leave me with one final photon geyser, one final photon geyser. And again, uh, Austin did say that he was. Um, counting my photon geysers and he thought that this was my last photon geyser but i've only used seven this is going to be the final photon geyser to go into this needle king and this necrozma i believe picks up three maybe four ko's no it's four it's four but this necrozma came through picked up four ko's and uh i really just bailed me out in all honesty so that was going to be huge for me it's going to be huge for my team right so this is going to mean that we leave this matchup at 1-1 one one between Frosted and I. 
And from here, I believe like right after my match, Merrill announced his result. Merrill picked up a 4-0 win. So now we're at 2-1. And, and I'm feeling decently good about this. Randy comes out with a win. So now we get three straight wins on a single day, which is huge for us, right? And so we're going to be 3-1. And, and it's not going to be until a couple of days later when the next match is, is able to be played. And uh, we just see that Visual Eye won his match, I believe 5-0. That's going to be super duper huge for us. It's going to clinch us the win and unfortunately uh the next few couple matches did get dropped i believe uh super salamans uh took a loss i took a minor loss and uh Inviva took a slightly bigger loss but uh, at that point it was already clinched those matches didn't particularly matter a whole heck of a lot I, I did want uh those wins those wins would have been huge for overall differential but uh overall i'm definitely not too too concerned about it it's going to mean that we stay healthily in the top form it's going to keep up this little bit of momentum that we have going on, and I think this is going to be big for us moving forward. Like I said, uh, the goal is to stay in the top four, not even for, I mean, partially for playoffs, but just uh, as a point of pride and to just kind of like have fun in the situation. But we will be able to advance on with a win, and I should probably stop rambling there because uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to get this thing out, but uh, I think that's going to be it for me. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the league war we will have two final weeks of the league war and uh they're going to be huge for us they're going going to be huge uh, our final week is against the epa and we have been neck and neck all season long uh we will also have uh the icba playoffs our final weeks of the icba i'll, de I'll definitely get caught up on those uh the epa academy coming back really really soon as well as uh other projects in the near, near future but with that once again thank you guys so much for watching gonna be once again